Well, good evening. We, we will be in Mark chapter 10 tonight, um, beginning with verse 46. It's been a little while, but we'll study a little, little, little bit about um, Bartimaeus, who was blind. And so we'll, we'll look in Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. I keep trying to get this lighting right, and I, I'm no lighting expert, so if anybody has any ideas, let me know. You can see the reflection in my glasses of the, of the light, so um, I'm no expert. Hi, Candy. I'm glad you're with me tonight, and uh, among others. So in Mark 10, verse 46, I'll read this. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together were together. A large crowd were, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth... Um, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Now, this could go uh, several different ways, but it, we know Jesus and we know that He's interested in uh, in this man because of the request or, or what he is uh, shouting. He, he wants mercy. He knows who he is. He's the son of David. Um, he has, um, that's, that's a sort of a faith statement right there, isn't it? I mean, he knows that he's the son of David. This is something that... Um, the Pharisees haven't figured out. The religious leaders haven't figured this out yet. But this blind man, he, he has that figured out. He wants him to have mercy on him. So no doubt he's heard about Jesus and he knows some things are, um, th some wonderful things are happening because of him. So Jesus stops everything and, and, and he says, uh, call him over. So they call to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Uh, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Now, Jesus asked him a question. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that this is an, it's interesting the way that Jesus approaches this man. He says, um, what do you want me to do for you? And <clears throat> this isn't the first time that Jesus has asked this question, if you remember back in verse uh, 36, he asked his, uh, well, James uh, James and John uh, came to him and they said, teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask. And Jesus replied, what do you want me to do for you? All right. So, it's the same question Jesus asked, but his disciples are saying, we want you to do whatever whatever we ask of you. And uh, Bartimaeus is just calling out for, for Jesus to have mercy on him. It's a little different, a little different situation, of course. Um, uh, the, the disciples, uh, James and, was it James and John? Yeah, yeah. James and John are um, asking this question of Jesus. They want, um, they want to be one on his left and one on, his, one on the right um, when he comes in glory, kingdom. And Jesus says, you don't know what you're asking. Well, the difference in the, in the, uh, the questioning and all this is um, Bartimaeus knows exactly what he's asking. Um, he wants to be able to see. So uh, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? 
And in verse 51, um, the blind man said, Rabbi, which means teacher, I want to see. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So Jesus gains another follower. I think it was the intent of this man. If he could follow, he would follow. Sort of hard to uh, follow Jesus everywhere he goes if you have this um, blindness going on, right? So Jesus takes care of that for him. But notice what Jesus says. He says, your faith has healed you. So how important is faith? Not to us, but how important is faith to Jesus? You, every time Jesus sees faith, in action, and James talks about, he talks about faith, and uh, James says, I'll show you my faith by what I do, by action. So our, the, the faith that we have in, in Christ moves us. Uh, it's sort of like what Paul says, Christ's love compels us. This, uh, this faith that we have in Jesus moves us to do certain things that we would otherwise probably not do. And maybe some things we would, but but we're being led by his spirit, is what um, the Apostle Paul tells us. We're, we're to keep in step with the spirit of Christ. And so in having the spirit of Christ in us, we uh, are good to the world that we're, that we're in. Uh, we're not... We're not like the world. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're not of the world, but um, but we sure do live in it. And Jesus shows us how to do that. So he's he's helping his disciples, I believe, and and everyone that's around that can hear this or see this. What's happening? He says, "Your faith has healed you." So he's making it known to everyone around that. Faith is a big deal. Faith is really um, what's important. It's because of this man's faith that he yells out and he wouldn't be quiet even though the, the people were telling him that he needed to settle down and be quiet. But he didn't do that. He, he knew that Jesus was uh, there going by and, and he knows, he believes, he has faith that he's the son of David. In other words, he's the real deal. He's the one that we've been looking for. And if he wants to, he can make me see again. That's really what he wanted. He just, he wanted to see. And what does he do with that sight? He follows Jesus. That's great. I mean, wouldn't it be great if the things that we ask for in prayer, I mean, the things that we want God to do for us, we in turn um, somehow find ways to use that to his glory. I mean, it, and it's sort of a, a following of, of him in thought and, and in action. We ask uh, God for whatever it might be. We ask in faith and we, we, uh, we want him to to do whatever it might be. Wouldn't it be interesting if we took that approach? Whatever it is that God uh, gives us or grants us or you know blesses us with, we in turn take that and we use it um, to further the kingdom, to, to praise God with. I mean, this man wants his sight. He has the faith in Jesus and Jesus says, it's your faith that, that's that's healed you, and go. Uh, he 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 told him to go, but he didn't leave. He he in turn, once he got his sight and was so excited about it, he followed Jesus along the road. Is what it says. And you could say, well, wouldn't you? I mean, this man healed you, but Jesus is pointing again to what it is that uh, um, that moved this man to say anything in the first place. 
I mean, he's been blind uh, for some time, and he is wanting to see, and he has faith in Jesus. And so Jesus grants that. Um, put some thought into that, the things that we pray for. Um, you know, maybe it's uh, letting letting people know that uh, you, you pray, if they say, Maybe it's a coworker says that, you know, something good happened or this worked out this way. And, and you, if you have been praying for them, let them know. I've been, I've been praying that this would work out. Um, that, that's, that's a good thing. And it, it shows that um, we know, um, we know who we're, we're praying to and we know what he's capable of. We have faith, and so we take it to him. So that's important. Uh, we we won't go into chapter eleven because it's a um, it's going to be the entire chapter, and we don't have time to do that right now. So we'll we'll stop right there. But I want to encourage you to have faith in what uh, God can do. And don't be afraid to ask him, whatever it might be. Have faith. And then when he answers that prayer, however he answers it, I mean, it may be, it may be no, it may be yes, it may be uh, let's, let's wait a while. I don't know. Um, we don't really like that one, do we? But uh, sometimes it's that. But he always answers. I don't think he uh, you know, doesn't answer your prayer if... Um, you're you're asking him for certain things. Uh, anyway, I, I believe that if we take what he has given us and we glorify him with it, that that is a that's a good thing, and we can be reminded of what Bartimaeus did once he gained his sight. He didn't just take off. I mean, there there would be a million things I would want to do, right? Um, probably you too. I mean, you're blind and now you can see. The possibilities are endless. I mean, the, the things that you've missed out on because you couldn't see, you couldn't go here or there like you like you want to. But now you can. But what he does with his sight, um, at least for for the the outset here, he follows Jesus down the road. That's a good picture, I think, of what uh, what we need to be doing. So. All right, it's kind of short, but we'll pray, and then uh, uh, I will see you next time. Father, thank you for this section of Scripture. Thank you for for um, showing us the heart of this man, uh, Bartimaeus, and how he uh, had faith in Jesus, and how he 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 wouldn't he wouldn't stop. He um, even though people were telling him to be quiet, he did not. Um, he, he got louder <laughs> because he knew that Jesus could do something. And so thank you for showing us your heart through, um, through your son, through Jesus, that you would stop and talk to this man and ask him what he wanted, and then grant that for him. We know that you love us, and that you care for us, and you want the best for us, and sometimes that means that we need to learn lessons that um, we may not like to learn, but, and then other times um, it's exciting what, uh, <laughs> what takes place, and so we thank you for being our God, and for loving us, and taking care of us, and I thank you in particular for this this man. And when he gained his sight, he he followed Jesus. Help us to follow your son in all that we do every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. And I hope that you have a good rest of the day, however long that may be. See you next time. <laughs>